All right, we are returning after a holiday. So it's been a week since we've worked on our exercise one line art jumble. This is where we're picking a theme. The suggested theme might be a band book or a favorite cartoon, but really it could be any theme that gives you something to search for, images to gather. I give step by steps, but don't worry about that because I'm talking you through it with this video, but the step by step I used is based on uh, a band book and then using a lot of images from Google AutoDraw. So the first thing you need for your theme, and it looks like most of you guys are good on this, is how do you get good line art images that you can use? They need to be pixel based and they need to be high enough resolution that they can be printed at least at eight by 10. So some sources we looked at, one was Google AutoDraw, linked in the assignment here, right? Where you can draw anything you want. So let's say I wanted uh, a, a cat. <laughs> and it will guess what, what I'm trying to draw. And it thinks I want a duck. But eventually, I might be able to find the thing. Or I could try drawing it again. But all of this is, is line art that is Creative Commons open that you could use. I kind of like the sock. That's nice. And then we did screen grabs of that. That's one way you can get line art to use. Let me see to remind myself what I've used. So that's how I got the fox and this cat. I'm doing a cat theme. It's coming back to me now. Another way is to go to Pixabay, which is my preferred image reference site because everything here is royalty free it's all creative commons open but it's also quality checked by real people so that it's high enough resolution and good so if i want cat line art i could search for that and then i can also limit it to just illustrations that are just black and white apply these filters And I can get some nice examples. Ooh, I've got a cat skeleton. And then you do need to log in in order to download the highest quality ones, but it's worth it and it's free. So I'm going to choose the highest raster dimensions. And we're looking for images that are, that are at least 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. And then you download. When you hit download, things are going to go to your downloads folder, which is next to your trash. You can just drag them to your desktop to work with. And then the last place you want to look for images, if all else fails, is good old Google Images, Google Image Search. And if I look at cat line art, there's going to be a ton, but it's going to be a very different quality. So I want to use tools here, just like I did in Pixabay, to limit the size to only large files. That will be at least 1,000 pixels in one dimension. Color, black and white. And then type, I could even try type and say line drawing. But I have to quality check these before I actually commit to using them. So one way to do that is to just click on them. Let's see. None of these look like my cat, but some of them are kind of cool, like this one. So if I click on them, and I can see how many pixels they are, 2,000 by 2,000. That might be pretty good. And I might feel confident then just to drag and drop it onto my desktop. But the real way to check, because that's a weird format, is to right click and say open image in new tab. And then zoom in on it and see that it's not blurry. It should fill the whole screen if it's going to be large enough. And then that's the one that you save. Now this is a weird format, the AVIF, and we're going to see what PhotoP does with that. But generally things you'll find online are going to be either PNGs or JPEGs. These are the online formats we're going to use. And then let's see, this one's kind of cute. It's big enough, but let's right click and say open image and new tab. Looks good. Save that to my desktop too. This is like my working space. Now, if I'm being nice and organized, I have a folder that I've already created that has the reference I used last class. 
So I can add that to my reference. And then it has my PSD file, which I mark as green. That's my working file. I can't just double click on that. I can, and it will open up in Photoshop. But if you want to use it in PhotoP, you close Photoshop because you're probably not signed into Photoshop. So if you're going to use Photoshop in the class, this is what you have to do. Since my morning class uses the Adobe products, you have to open Photoshop and then go to help and then see who's signed in. And if it's not you, you have to click sign out. And then you open Photoshop again, and then you sign in with your own Adobe account, which you can create just with your Alamo email or any email. And then remember to sign out at the end. But if you're using PhotoP, instead of double clicking on the PSD, you have to open PhotoP. And it's linked in the assignment right here. And then you can drag and drop your PSD there and it will come in with all your layers, or open Photo P, you can search for it from your computer, which is another reason to be nicely organized, right? And why I use the color, so it's easy to find that PSD. And you open it up, and then here's everything. I have one, two, three, four, five, six different layers I could play with. But maybe I decide certain ones just aren't that good. You know, I don't like this one anymore. So I can just delete that, I can just drag that down to the trash. I know I need five. I don't really love that other auto draw one either, if I'm being honest. So I like those. Those are pretty good, but let's that's only four. So let's add in one of my new ones, maybe the cat skeleton one. And as soon as it comes in, it's going to have this transform box around it, which allows me to rotate it if I click outside of the box. It allows me to enlarge it or shrink it. And if I hold down shift, I can distort it. Now something we noticed, or I noticed helping a student, is in Safari, if you hold down Shift, it canceled the transform box. So this is what I want you to do. You can also try. You can hit return and finish it. In order to transform something again, so I'll isolate this layer, I can go to Edit in PhotoP and go to Free Transform, and that will get me the box back. Then I can right click within that box and get all the different options. So if I click scale, then I should be able to hold down shift and squeeze it if I want. And if I don't hold down shift, it will just maintain its original proportions, but shrink and enlarge. My favorite one is to right click and do warp. And warp allows you to kind of roll it like it's cookie dough in different directions push and pull it in different ways. Now, if I want to delete from it, I need to change it from being a smart object with that little box in it to being what's called rasterized. So if I try to delete something from it right now, like I don't want the little ball of string, and I try to select it to delete, and I hit delete, it's going to remind me that it needs to be rasterized first. So how do you rasterize? You right click on the layer, and you click on rasterize. And that's true in Photoshop or Photo P. For this semester, I'm going to be demoing these things with the freeware, but I'm able to help you whatever the program is you're using. So I'm just going to do kind of rough cutouts. So now I've got them all layered. At the end of last class, I was starting to delete from certain things. I want to show you something kind of cool you can do in Photo P or Photoshop, and that's using the uh, not just the lasso to select, but the magic wand tool. So the magic wand is right underneath the lasso in Photo P. In Photoshop, I, I have students set it up so it is right underneath, though the Photoshop 2023 makes it so you have to add it in, which is annoying. But the magic wand to me is much more useful than, than any of the other like quick selection tools. The magic wand settings are up at the top. And the setting you want to try to play with is called contiguous. And the tolerance we'll usually use is around 32. That's a good default tolerance. I think Photo P starts with 16. That just means how sensitive is this tool. So we start with black and white. 
And so for one instance, what if there's a shape in here? I just really want to make sure it comes through. Like what if this cat skull I want to have come through all my other layers? So I'm going to use my magic wand and I'm going to select the white space within this cat skull. And selections can move between layers. So, so far I've selected the shape inside the jawbone. I'm going to hold down shift and add to that selection with the magic wand and get the top of the skull as well. So now I have this selection. Now what I can do is I can delete that selection from these other layers. So anything that overlaps with it, I can go layer by layer and hit delete and cut it out. So that when I turn that layer back on, that cat skull is going to be showing. Yeah. Is that any different, or that's different than, I guess, like positioning a layer on top of or behind it? So, why we're doing black line art and we're changing them all to multiply mode so that they don't have any white pixels that we can see anyway. We're just layering dark pixels on top of dark pixels. So, one way you, you could also do that is to take the white pixels of the skull, show them normally, and put them on top of everything. But that's white pixels, and we don't want those for this project. <laughs> So there's multiple ways to do things. But this is a way of deleting them out of the other layers rather than just masking them with a, a layer on top. I'll do it more dramatically here. And I'm going to use the magic wand because I've made this into a chubby cat, right? So I'm selecting on this layer. And now I've selected basically the body of the cat. You see that? Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to delete it away from this layer. And then I'm going to delete it away from this layer. And then I'm going to delete it away from this layer. It can be an interesting way to, to remove content, right? And the benefit of that is now when I stack everything up, that's always going to be empty. And it's going to help kind of reveal the shape of this skeletal cat, right? In interesting ways. I can do that with other layers as well. So let's see, for this one, what if there's one cat shape I definitely want to come through? I'm going to use the magic wand. I'll zoom in so you can see. But this is going to be a nice lesson. You see how this is not what's called the contained shape, because I've already cut away a part of it. So when I use the magic wand here, oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Command D to deselect. When I use the magic wand here, it is going to work. Good. It's actually contained based on, there we go, <laughs> because there are white pixels that are containing it. But let's say all of this was filled with white. I'm just going to, ah, I won't bother. Anyway, the magic wand can only select contiguous pixels that are touching when you have contiguous turned on. When you have contiguous turned off, it's going to select every pixel of that color in the layer. So now it's every white pixel, right? In the same way, I could select every black pixel instead. But if I have contiguous turned on, then it's going to be only those pixels that I'm selecting that are touching. So like those pixels of that cat versus all the, the black pixels. So magic wand is, is really helpful for touching. So here's a nice contained cat. So I'm going to select the white shapes inside of that. And then just so you can see, I'll turn the white background on. It's like a stamp or a stencil. I can now take that shape and I can cut it out of other layers, like this layer, delete, this layer, delete, this layer, delete, this layer, delete. And now when I turn that line art back on, all the, the pixels around on the inside of that line art are cleaned up. What are you doing to do the delete? So I'm first making a selection and then I'm just hitting the delete key. But I ha but it will only affect the layer that's selected. Okay. So let me show you another way. I can do that again. I can take that cat shape. So I'm showing you my different layers by turning them on and off, right? 
So now I'm going to select that same thing inside this cat. Also, the magic wand.